Did Sean Whalen even need makeup to look emaciated? The dude's been looking haggard since that Got Milk commercial. Right from the get-go with Last House, Craven was always bold in his commitment to provocative, sometimes freakish material. Whether a twisted tale originated with him or another writer, he never blinked when it came to exposing the ugliness of human nature. Most of his films, intense and even deviant though they may be, contain simple conceits which could be explained, yet his approach would often be anomalous. As the most cerebral and professorial of horror filmmakers on the proverbial Mount Gormore, and I mean that literally considering his former career as an educator, Craven believed in depth even while delving into the worlds of sadists and raving lunatics. The People Under the Stairs represents the nightmare filmmaker at perhaps his most subversive. Racism, classism, and heavy metaphors about wealth-based societal hierarchies are laid on thick in this urban fairy tale, and the result is a cartoonish, broad, over-the-top funhouse of horror with plenty of action and suspense, but the outlandish, campy tone doesn't mesh cohesively with the more serious, cruel aspects of his satirical nightmare. You know, leather daddies always get shafted on the third Sunday in June, so to all you amiable fetishists out there, happy Father's Day. Like a mix of Huck Finn and Flowers in the Attic, People is very nearly a chamber piece with its heavily claustrophobic, booby-trap-riddled setting. As the warped, odious owners of said property and representing the absolute worst mankind has to offer, Wendy Roby and Everett McGill go full-on Looney Tunes in their exaggerated, shrieking performances. Of course, the inside joke of their Twin Peaks heritage makes for a fascinating comparison watch, and one wonders whether Ed and Nadine might have had a more loving marriage if they had A, been brother and sister, and B, spent their days as inhuman slumlords who keep their discarded, cannibalistic adoptees confined to their basement. David and Mark, get on that. The plight of plucky Brandon Quinton Adams and the abused, incarcerated A.J. Langer is a nifty idea which allows for numerous tense, outrageous set pieces of daring escapes and death-defying chases. Yet there's an odd disconnect here which doesn't allow what should be a sweet little burglary-turned-rescue tale to fly. It doesn't register on an emotional level the way one would hope, which is surprising since I usually find children in peril films very affecting. It's likely due to Craven's inability to reconcile the tonality of the near-impossible plot turns with a very real-life setting. Asides like Roby's apoplectic response to Langer even being in the same room with a black child, and the couple's desire to get clean people into their office buildings, are all indicative of the social commentary Craven is going for. Perhaps the weakest and least believable element is Langer's entrapment as she seems to waffle between self-awareness of her situation and an inconsistent Stockholm Syndrome attitude about speaking no evil and being a good girl. The pacing and story structure are also wonky, with Adams' fool character managing to wriggle his way out of their clutches, yet Craven would have you believe they wouldn't do anything more than privately rage and let it go. The sudden appearance of the great Bill Cobbs is welcome, but he's just there to dump exposition, and again, it feels clumsy. Here is another story which might have worked better as a novel. If one approaches stairs as pure fantasy, it works quite well and is mostly a rip-roaring good time thanks to gloriously unhinged villain turns, unpredictable obstacles within a labyrinthine residential prison, and a resourceful, heroic performance from Adams. It's far from perfect and can't maintain its atmospheric frenzy, but as a sly endorsement for Ving Rhames' eventual run for Secretary of Pussy, it's effective. Thanks for watching, you jive turkeys. Plenty more scary stuff coming up, so like and subscribe and have a happy Halloween.